Hey, I'm Pusher. I'm back with a second tutorial for these neon sounds in Massive. Um, if you haven't seen the first tutorial, it covers some of the basic stuff like which oscillators I use and filters and stuff in the voicing tab and effects and all that. So if you haven't seen the first one, if you're not comfortable with Massive yet, you may want to go check out the first one just so you can keep up with this tutorial. I'm going to go a lot faster. I'm going to go through a lot of different sounds, leads, chords, and basses. Um, so yeah, you may want to check out the first one if you're not that comfortable with Massive yet. Um, yeah, I've got a lot to cover, so I'm just going to get right into it. So this is a track that I made this afternoon, if you can call it a track. It's uh, 32 seconds long. This started as just a four-bar loop um, with a few different variations on it, and I kind of turned it into, a, I guess, a five-group of four-bar loop. So... I'm just going to go through each sound individually here. The first one is this lead, which reminds me of Rusty, actually, if you know his music, it's great. Kind of has this phasey bit to it. So I'm just going to go through the massive patch here. It's a saw and oscillator one. I don't have any filtering going on here. Um, dimension expander, obviously. Uh, just to make it a little bigger. EQ, I've turned up the boost frequency and high shelf a bit just to give it some presence. Here's the difference. Just a little bit extra on top. Um, in the voicing tab, I have the unison uh, up and the pitch cutoff on and the unison spread over a little bit. The only thing that is different about this patch that I didn't cover in the first tutorial is mono versus poly. If you set it to poly, it's polyphonic, meaning you can play multiple notes, so multiple keys. You could play chords. If you set it to mono, you can't. You can only play one at a time. Um, for leads, I like to set it to legato triller. So if I play a C and hold it, and then play a G, it, it'll go back to the C that I'm still holding. Um, and then the only other thing that you really have to worry about with mono is over in the oscillator tab, the time. This is under glide. Um, that's just here, if you turn it up, you can hear it takes longer to glide between two notes. And if you turn it down, it's immediate. So I like to have it around here because then you get a little bit of glide. So it gives the sound a little bit extra character, but um, not so much that if you play fast, you can't hear the individual notes. See, if you turn it up too much, you start to lose the pitch, and then if it's up too high, then it's just noise. Anyway, that's that patch. Second, here we've got this guy. This is sort of an arpeggio. Um, I guess this sounds sort of like the beginning of Icarus by Madian. And I've drawn in the notes. I never use arpeggiators for anything. I like to control each individual note. So this is just really quick. Uh, I have actually a third or a logic echo on it. Here it is with that. Yeah. If you look inside Massive here, it's a saw again. It's pretty much the same as the first patch we were looking there looking at there it's got the unison spread up and all this business dimension expander EQ um, the only difference here is the low pass is shaping it with envelope one so like I said in the first video very quickly goes up and quickly goes down so the cutoff is very quickly going from the bottom point around to the top and back again so you get this sort of so it's just sort of a quick thing and if you play them really quickly together you can do kind of cool arpeggios like that. That's about it for the sound. Oh, and then when you have the echo on it. So I'm using it more of a, as more of a texture. You can hear it there. Uh, next sound. Ah, this is another great arpeggio. Sort of a more... Um, video game, classic video game, or wave racer sort of arpeggio thing. Here's what it sounds like on its own. It's really um, cute. 
So I've got some reverb on it. That's new for these sounds. That's one thing. The low pass is shaping it. It's actually not going all the way up. If it goes all the way up, it has a, it's a little less cute. If you do this, it stays a little bit darker and kind of stays cute. Like a timid little animal or something. And then this is another cool thing that you can kind of try stuff with. Notice I have uh, envelope one going to the cutoff. I have envelope two doing a different thing, sort of slowly-ish um, going up. And that's going to the pitch here. So listen to this. Or right. Here it is without. Here it is with. Um, so you can sort of change the attack of the sound, especially with quick things like arpeggios where you have lots of notes happening rapidly. If you change the attack of it, it's going to pretty much change the entire character of the sound. So doing things like uh, pitch stuff on... Here, turn this down. Doing uh, pitch things with the attack or just doing anything really to the attack of the sound is going to do a lot to the sound. Yeah. Oh, and then with the reverb. That's a nice one. This is um, sort of a funk inspired sound. I call it the sexy Ariana Grande lead or funky lead because I heard it in a song of hers and then made it massive. So same deal in the uh, in the voicing tab here. We don't have any unison spread on. It's pretty basic. It's a saw. Um, Dimension expander, EQ, just a little bit of brightness. The low pass here is really what gives it the character. See, we have the cutoff kind of in the middle. If it goes too high, it's sort of a different character. I wanted to keep it in the middle so it's got sort of a subdued. Um, sort of funkiness to it. And the other part of this that I haven't talked about before in the other tutorial or this one is turning up the resonance. So I'll just quickly explain what the resonance is. What we do with the cutoff is we, it, it's in massive, but I'll just show it here on an EQ. The cutoff, when it starts at the bottom, looks like this. When it opens up, goes up to the top, and then goes back down. So it's just sort of a sweep in pitch, letting through low frequency, high frequency. If you turn up the resonance, what it does is it adds a peak to your cutoff. And as it sweeps up, really boosts the frequencies that it's going over. And so when you turn up the resonance uh, in massive, you can hear it. Here, I'll make this even longer so you can hear it better. So here it is without resonance. And here it is with. So you can hear the difference. This is good for things like laser sounds or pew sounds or pew, 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 you know. Um, yeah, and it... For this particular synth, gives it a little bit of extra character. This is a really good idea for getting wavy sounds. Um, again, this low pass I was talking about kind of shaping your sounds isn't just for shaping them into plucks. It's for shaping them into um, sounds that have more just more character. So that's that sound. Okay, I'm going to leave this bell for now. Here's a chord for you. Oh, here, I'll start from the start. So again, I like to write in all my notes. I don't like arpeggiators. I don't like gates. I like to control every single note. And so... For me, Massive is an enormously powerful tool for just making the sound sound the way that I want it to. Now, this is a pretty straightforward one. Uh, saw again. 
in the voicing tab here we have some unison spread um, dimension expander EQ the big part of this is the low pass which shapes it here with envelope one just sort of a pluck um, but the unison spread here I'll dim I'll show you without and with gives it a lot more character which again Imagine each one of your synth patches like a person. You want them to have character. They're more interesting. It'll make your songs more interesting. So that's that one. Here's the second chord I was using. Here. Again, no g That's fun. This synth patch is almost identical to the last one, um, except that we don't have a filter happening here, and we have a phaser on it. The voicing tab is the same. It's a square, dimension expander, EQ. All that stuff is the same. Um, but we're not shaping it into a pluck, and I have a phaser on it. Here it is without the phaser. So the phaser gives it an extra layer of detail. And here I'll play the other chord. Without the low pass. Here I'll even put a phaser on it. So they're the same. They're exactly the same, except for two tiny details um, that I think just illustrate what a phaser can do to add a little bit of detail, but more especially what the low pass um, filter shaping can do to make uh, just the sound, just the shape of the sound so very different. Uh, here's a bass that people have been asking me about. This is a Reese bass that I guess is used a lot in this kind of neon music. This is not difficult to make. This is just a, a saw and some unison spread. That's about it. Dimension expander EQ. It's actually identical to this lead. Yeah, and it just adds sort of some character, some vintage feel. Sorry, a little intensity. Um, it's nice and it especially works with the kick and the other the lead that I just played there Because when the two synths double up um, Like they really add a lot to each other just in terms of loudness I guess and when you double that even with a kick check this out It does a lot for the intensity level Anyway, that's pretty much it for these sounds. I hope that this will give you more of an idea for how to make different sounds with Massive. Um, and what you should really start to think about if you're not already is when you're listening to a song and you go, hey, that's a great sound, how do I make that? You can start thinking, okay, well, I'll dissect the components of the sound. Is it a saw? Is it a square? Is it... Um, does it have a filter on it? Is it like a pluck or is it a sustained note? If it's a sustained note, is there maybe some shaping going on like in that Ariana Grande lead that I had? Is there some resonance on it? Is you, do I hear for high frequency? Um, dimension expander you kind of always want to have one. Is there lots of high frequency sound? Is there maybe uh, some reverb or a delay or a phaser? Um, and if you can hear the different components of the sound Whoop. if you can hear the different components then you should be able to create the synth or at least approximate it pretty closely now there's one other thing actually I wanted to mention and that's this bell sound oh logic you slow which is great and I've started using a lot lately this is a good example Look at this. This is ridiculous. I didn't program this. This is 
the bell clarinet. This is a massive preset. So what you should be doing, a really good way anyway, to get your head around massive, is to go into it, pull up some presets that you like, or that you like aspects of, and here, look if you look at this. Say you really love the bell clarinet. Well, you can start like turning on and off oscillators. And looking at what goes into making the patches, or you can turn off a filter. That's pretty weird. But if you can dissect the sound of the preset, and remember it's all written there in Massive, if you can start dissecting the sounds, then you should be able to reverse that process and use the tricks that you learned from the presets to make your own sounds. And that can be a really good way to innovate and to come up with new sounds. Um, so yeah, that should give you some stuff to think about. Um, I'm Pusher. I'll put my links below in the description there so you can check out my pages and music. I've got lots of music. Um, and I hope to make another tutorial in the next little while dealing with the chords that go into this music. And then you really will have everything that I know. And you'll be able to make music that sounds just like me. And hopefully, eventually, music that doesn't sound just like me, but sounds just like you. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.